Before we start this tutorial, I just want to say that yes, there is another way to actually play this on an emulator on PC, and that is actually via the um, the Xenia emulator. Now, I will say right now that Xenia does run fine, and in some cases could be better, but I honestly feel like Xenia is not the best emulator for Sonic Unleashed. One thing because of the fact that um, every time I've tried to play this game for some reason, it always gets stuck on load screens, it gets like crashes, and this is like with all the mods and all the tutorials tutorials in the freaking world. I've also tried getting support for this game uh, multiple different times on different forums, discords, reddits, and all this other stuff, and I wasn't able to find anything to actually solve my problem. So in the midst of me trying to get Sonic Unleashed actually working on PC um, with Sonic Unleashed, I was actually forced to actually you know use the RPCS3 emulator since that is another way to actually do it, and I was actually able to get an uh, instant first time result. I'm not trying to shill out just for RPCS3. I think RPCS3 I think Xenia is a great emulator uh, because I actually play other games like Dragon Ball Raging Blast, Cars the Video Game and stuff like that and those work fine but for some reason Sonic Unleashed is cursed on my computer and my system. So this tutorial is mainly for those people that can't get Xenia to run or if you just don't like Xenia if for those other reasons that I just mentioned which is super freaking understandable if I just say so myself I will say that you should probably watch this video if those actual things come to your mind but with that being said let's start this video <laughs> what's going down my pausanos welcome back to a brand new special video and in today's video I'm actually going to be showing you guys what is the uh, without a doubt the best way to play Sonic Unleashed on PC now, if you guys didn't know, it's actually pretty hard to actually play Sonic Unleashed nowadays on like modern devices such as, you know, an Xbox, um, you know, Series X or a PlayStation 5 because Sonic Unleashed has not been re-released on anything. Although I'm pretty sure that, you know, the Xbox does have backwards compatibility with, um, you know, Sonic Unleashed. But at the same time, um, I don't have an Xbox. I don't. I actually plan to actually probably get an Xbox before a PlayStation 5 because uh, the PlayStation 5, you know, I, I'm just a PC guy nowadays. But the Xbox and the PlayStation in general, um, I just don't have any real interest in getting them. And there also might be some people out there who just do not have these consoles or just do not have the um, the money or time to get them. So um, honestly, if you're playing on PC, this is probably the next best way to actually do it. With the PC, you can actually up res the resolution, which kind of sounds redundant the way I said it. But uh, you can actually um, you know, up the resolution. You can have 60 FPS. You can also mod the game. And the low times are actually even better too. So this is just straight up a better version of the the game so in this video I'm gonna be teaching you guys basically how to get Sonic Unleashed running on your PC now just as a word of advice you are going to need a pretty decent computer um, and also to be honest with you you're also gonna to have to have a computer that's it has really good peak CPU and right here I'm gonna show you guys basically like kind of a tier list video I've actually seen from a reddit post which I feel like this is actually um, basically like what I use to actually assume like to basically assess how good my computer was so you can scroll down here you can kind of see multiple CPUs with like um, if you see basically R if it's something called if, if, if like a CPU starts with like an R that's a Ryzen CPU if you see something that starts with an I it's basically an Intel so for me this is my specs right here I have a Ryzen 7 5800 uh, X or H no it's H yeah <laughs> I, I'm just trying to go from like the top of my head I also have a RTX 3050 uh, Ti but uh, remember that your emulators is basically gonna require more power from your CPU in general. So if you look down here, I think it's, it should be like an A tier. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, hold on. So yeah, come here if you actually wanna see if, you know, your CPU is up to snuff with basically what RPCS3 needs, which is the emulator that we are actually going to be downloading. All right, like I said, of course, what your emulator you're actually gonna be using is RPCS3. This is an open source PlayStation 3 emulator. It's really good. This is basically the standard. This is a great, amazing emulator. And it's basically the way that we're actually gonna be doing this. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down here and you're gonna download for Windows. You can also download for Linux and, P and Mac. But since this is technically a just a, um, a tutorial for like the Windows version, I'm not sure how this will translate to Linux or or Mac. 
uh, you could probably get stuff like um, you could probably get some other tutorials out there but honestly I don't think there'd be too much of a difference besides like some different file names and different things that you have to do with the OS anyway what you're gonna do is you're just gonna want to head and just download the RPCS3 emulator then what you want to do is actually extract this I recommend using 7-zip do not use WinRAR or anything like that because of the fact that WinRAR sucks because you had to like pay for it and it's gonna ask you if you want to pay for it every time but 7-zip uh, is actually free so then you're gonna want to go do like go to your desktop maybe make a new folder and just for this I already have an installation of RPCS3 but um, you know I actually want to uh, make another one just to actually give you guys another tutorial so click on our RPCS3 this is basically where it's gonna save click OK it's gonna extract real quick close that out and then on my desktop you should see this RPCS3 folder and there you got it you have RPCS3 now is the awesome amazing part okay so now what you want to do is actually get the uh, you know the firmware update you're gonna have to download this really quick so if you come to this web page you're actually gonna scroll down go to download PS3 update and we're basically gonna let this download real quick uh, it's gonna appear in our, in our downloads folder and we're actually gonna have to use it um, in uh, a bit so basically you're gonna let the file download and then on your desktop or wherever you download it to you're gonna see this um, this file called ps3 update dot pup um, I would make it safe by just like putting it in here just to like keep your you know your desktop not as cluttered as mine so um, you know basically then you're gonna go on ahead and go and open the emulator itself so this is basically what you see when you first actually boot it up uh, there is a quick start guide online which is very helpful so if I miss anything in this video that is probably integral that you want to know about uh, there is this like quick there's a quick start guide on the website itself so you know that's what I would probably do Anyway, here is the RPCS3 emulator. It actually looks very similar to stuff like Dolphin if you've ever used that, which is the reason why this is awesome. Anyway, the first thing that you want to do actually is go to File and then go to Install Firmware. And then you want to scroll down here and click on PS3 Update.pup. Now, the reason why you actually want to get this is because without the firmware, you're not going to be able to actually use this emulator. So after you download this from the official Sony website, you can actually use this. So you, after you click it, you just want to click open, and it's going to basically install the firmware version, which is 4.91. It will say that you have successfully installed PS3 firmware and LLE modules. I don't, I don't know what that second part is, but then it's going to basically lie to you and say that you know I was gonna compile all that stuff I should have said like, earlier in my video but uh, you know the RPCS3 kind of like compiles like shaders and textures so it, it, it doesn't automatically do that like it, it honestly does that over time which I will explain later so I want to get into the uh, compiling but I'm gonna let this go do this thing real quick and then I'm gonna continue the tutorial after that All right, after it's done doing that, it'll just go away, and then now it's time for the awesome part. Well, the other awesome part. You're actually gonna want to actually configure your controller. Now, for me, uh, well, if you do have a controller. I do not have an Xbox controller, which works natively with your PC, if you, you know, have one, but I have an actual PlayStation 5 controller. So I, what I use is an application called DS4 Windows. Now this is not gonna be a tutorial for that at all, but if you want to actually look up how to use it, it's very similar. Uh, well, it's actually no, it's not very similar that what <laughs> it's actually very simple Obviously, it's kind of dead right now But um, you can also use your PlayStation 4 controller Which I think I'd probably use but I can't use it right now because that controller has some stick drift issues and I need to fix it But um, and I only say that because the battery life. Oh my god, but um yeah, uh, you're gonna want to use DS4, and then you're gonna go want to go to pads. And I already kind of like set this up in my other emulator, so I don't think I'm gonna go do do too much here. So because of how uh, my controller is set up, I actually have an X input controller, and uh, basically, you know, you just have to set up like this. So if I press up on my D-pad, it's up, left, right, down, and honestly, it's already kind of. It's already really like configured already so but if you do have to reconfigure this stuff then you can go on ahead in here and just like you know reconfigure your controls basically make it so that this actually looks right to you and that's the control scheme that you that you want so we're gonna go on ahead and just save this now here is actually the interesting part 
Also with the firmware update, you actually now get the PlayStation 3 interface, which is really cool. But now this is the interesting part. Now you're going to have to find a way to actually get Sonic Unleashed. Now I'm not going to tell you how to get Sonic Unleashed, but you know, you have to get Sonic Unleashed, you'll have to get the ISO itself uh, somehow. And uh, for me, I actually ripped the game from a disc. So basically, you know, you buy Sonic Unleashed, you get a DVD drive, and then you rip the game's contents from there. So right here is actually my um, Sonic Unleashed, uh, basically, like files. When you actually load up your ISO on your computer and you click on it, you'll get about three files. You'll get a disc file, you'll get an update file, and you'll also get a PlayStation 3 folder. Well, basically, these are two folders, and this is the only file, but you know what I mean. So basically what you're going to do is, for me, I actually like to make a folder in here called like um, Sonic Unleashed or, or ISOs, but we're just going to call it Sonic Unleashed because, you know, this is kind of like a throwaway emulator that I'm using right now because I already have this installed. So we're going to get Sonic Unleashed, you're going to install it, we're going to put it in our file folder that we just made. Oh, dang, I don't, why? <laughs> and uh, I think it might take a little bit because uh, the game is kind of big. I think it's about like eight gigabytes, which is actually really minuscule nowadays, Jesus. But uh, it's gonna take a little bit, so let it actually copy the contents from this folder to that one. All right, then after it's done, you'll see that it's, you know, all this stuff is basically in this file. Now it's actually really easy adding games on here. All you gotta do is actually get the PlayStation 3 game file um, or folder and then just drag it in here. Now after that it's gonna ask you would you like to install shortcuts and stuff like that and I just don't really like try to like do that. So as you can see you'll see that Sonic Unleash is now in our actual uh, game list. We have Sonic Unleash plus now you can boot this up right now but i actually recommend you actually to update this version of the game to 1.02 now what you'll actually find is that this version is 1.00 i've had the most success from sonic unleash from running 1.02 which i will show you guys in a bit but i'm not really sure if i can actually show you guys how to get the update so honestly you're gonna have to find that out on your own but um, honestly, you're going to have to find out how to get 1.02, and that's actually going to be the version of Sonic on the shit you want to play. So like I said, this is a throwaway emulator, so I'm basically going to delete this because of the fact that I'm going to show you my actual RPCS3 emulator. Just as a quick reminder, because I actually forgot to mention this in the video, but it's actually very easy to install the um, the actual like updates. So really, all you got to do when you get the update, which again is 1.02, go to File, go to Install Packages, then once you see your downloads and stuff like that you'll see um you know this open and then they'll ask you if you want to install you say yes and then that's basically it. it's very very easy unfortunately i can't tell you how to actually get it but whatever but now it's actually time for the next step okay after you've actually gotten sonic unleashed on your pc you're gonna want to actually well let's close out these you're gonna want to actually get the unleash mod manager this is something that you can download from Game Banana. By the way, all the links to all this stuff will be in the link in the description down below. So this is the Sonic Unleashed Mod Manager. This is how you're actually going to install mods on this thing. And I will have a link to basically all the mods that you probably should have. I feel like they're essential mods. And also, there is one mod that I really like, which is called Werehog's Fury. This is actually pretty good. What? This is no longer active development or uh, whatever. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it still is a great mod though. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna manually download this and just download the um, You know the mod manager like this. You're gonna have the uh, Unleashed mod manager exe. You're gonna drag and drop that to the rpcs3 folder So this is now where I'm gonna actually teach you guys how to set this up You're gonna go to this unleashed mod manager. Then you're gonna go to you know make a mods directory What you want to do here is actually this is basically like the setup by the way but you're gonna go and you're gonna right click, you're gonna make a new folder, and you're gonna call it mods. Because this is basically where you're, what do you mean? What do you, what What do you, what are you, to, oh, oh, well, apparently there already is a mods folder, that's. Oh, wait, this is my other, wait, this is not even my RPS3, okay, hold up. <laughs> Alright, yeah, like I said, you're gonna do a new. You're going to go to, you know, folder, mods, and then you're going to select folder, and this is basically where your mods are going to go. 
Now, you're going to have to also select your game executable. So you're going to go to RPCS3, you're going to go to, don't go to Sonic Unleashed for God, it's not ISOs. Then you go to PlayStation 3 game, go to US directory, then you're going to go scroll all the way down and you're going to find this eBoot file. Ignore the fact that this is an SNES 9X ROM because um, we have some history, okay? So just open that and you'll just have the eBoot file. This is actually the main way that the game is actually going to boot. Now you're also going to actually uh, select the emulator executable that you have. So go back to your RPCS3 uh, you know, folder and click application and this is basically what you're going to select. Um, now you also can you can also load up your save data on here but I'm not going to do that because I actually don't know how. So but it's probably like really easy so there's tutorials for that. So also you can just basically continue and now you'll have your mod manager mods are actually very easy to actually install on this thing so if i go to like my old rpcs3 thing and i actually click my mods i can actually get all of these mods right here and just drag and drop them uh to the new mods folder so drag and drop them to the new mods folder or really just drag all your mods there to begin with and you're going to see a lot of um, mods here. And this is the ones that I have been, honestly, some of these are just like whatever, but some of these are actually honestly like game changers. Honestly, these are kind of what you need. So uh, there is stuff like the Sonic Unleashed 60 FPS fix. This one is honestly going to give you about like 60 to 110 FPS. You're also going to have Eggman Land HDR fix. This is only for Xenia though, so I don't know why this is even here. Uh, there's also Dragon Road Act 3 fixes because apparently there's actually some parts and problems with Dragon Road Act 3. You can actually remove motion blur, which I really like because I do not like motion blur at all. And it looks ugly. And it's not Well, it's not the fact that it looks ugly. I just don't like it because it makes my head dizzy. Uh, and then there's like other stuff like Burning Blaze and uh, you know Rush Blaze. I, I, I just love Blaze, man. And then uh, you got Sonic Unleashed your levels, which basically makes it so that you can actually level up faster. There's also fixes, and there's also another leveling mod. I tried to get two of these because I'm going to explain that in a bit. Then there's also Unhinged Werehog, and then there's a very essential one, which is called Werehog's Fury, which makes the Werehog a lot faster. Or not too much faster, but it makes him a lot um, more versatile and faster, and actually removes the battle music. Not always, but most of the time. Now, the only problem with the Unleashed Mod Manager is that the mods actually are designed to really work with Xenia. Some of these are actually are designed to actually work with RPCS3, which is good, which is, you know, that's, that's nice and all. But unfortunately, uh, some of these are actually not, you know, made to work with um, RPCS3, unfortunately. And it's probably because of the fact that Xenia is the main emulator that people use, but I really don't like using Xenia because probably I've already explained why I do not like using Xenia. So with that being said, you're going to want to check mark some of these boxes. And then after that, you're going to do save content and install and launch Sonic Unleashed. Uh, you're going to want to save that. And honestly, I'm not going to do that right now because of the fact that I want to use the other emulator for this. Because at this point, this emulator is kind of dead to me. This is the the throwaway emulator that I was kind of talking about earlier. So we're just going to delete that and we're going to get to the actual juice and potatoes of my actual, um, you know, emulator. So this is how my emulator looks. Like I was saying before, I have 1.02. It's still the same serial number and all this stuff, but it is basically like the same game. Now, also what I want to show you guys here is some custom config files that I have or some custom configurations for this game that I will actually show you guys. So if you actually right click the game and do change custom configuration, you can actually see, okay, what the free, who cares? But <laughs> you can actually see uh, basically some more like config files. Now I've actually had to do this because of the fact that this game um, does have some weird, weird like uh, stuff going on. I actually have like a couple of crashes on my PC and some things just do not look right. So I came in here and I actually configured this stuff and um, I'm going to quickly, you know, just without any commentary, go over all of my settings real quick. And if, you know, I would honestly uh, implore you guys to actually match up my settings with yours. But if this stuff is not good for your computer, then I can understand that. But you're going to have to do your own research on this stuff. But it really isn't that complicated. It might look a little intimidating, but it's actually not that bad. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go through all my settings real quick.
obviously the ones that are actually like the ones that you know you should be checking off is the ones that are in white um the red ones i don't i think they're the i don't know but <laughs> basically just match up my uh my settings with yours and you should be fine and also when you want to launch uh, sonic unleash from this um this menu all you gotta do is just right click it and do just boot with custom configuration if you don't do this then you won't uh actually boot it with the custom configuration which will probably help you out but I don't actually boot Sonic Unleash from here. I actually go to the Unleash Mod Manager, and with all my mods, I have it right here. Now this is like some additional settings that I have. So if you guys want to have like some some more settings, I don't know why my color is purple, but it is. But um, <laughs> uh, these are like additional settings that I have. You know, updates and emulators stuff like that. This is what I use. By the way, you can also you can also use this emulator for Xenia, but this is not a Xenia tutorial. But this is how I usually launch Sonic Unleashed. So I usually do just save content and launch Sonic Unleashed. And what it will actually do is install basically all of the mods that you just um, that you have like check marked here. The other ones I just don't have check marked because they either don't work or they're stupid. And then it's gonna launch the emulator, which will load the game. Now, honestly, what I usually do here is I usually just, uh, I usually just, you know, uh, you know, X mark the game. Wait, <laughs> I usually just close the game and then I just, since it's already launched uh, RPC history, I then boot with custom configuration. I'm not sure if I have to do that every time, but it doesn't inf interfere with anything. And it, it just makes sure that I actually am launching this game with mods and with the custom configuration, which is what you need. And then um, basically it's going to do all of this stuff. It does this every single time because of the settings that I have, which is not bad. Uh, it does take a little bit to actually launch, but if you've ever played Sonic Unleashed on the PlayStation 3, maybe it's actually not that uh, different from that um, process, but uh, it's really not that bad. So it's going to do this for a little bit, and then it's going to launch Sonic Unleashed. And then we'll have Sonic Unleashed for the PlayStation 3. Now I'm just going to see you let you guys see what basically uh, what this is all about so yeah this is basically Sonic Unleashed on PC uh, it is pretty you know it actually runs extremely well I'm gonna play act one real quick because this is kind of like the benchmark level if you will uh, for this game although there are some acts that do not work sometimes and yeah it's basically Sonic Unleashed now I do have a little bit of stuttering here and there but you know it's not unlike the PlayStation 3 version and honestly it also might have be also a cause of this might be the fact that I'm actually recording this and the way I'm recording this is not how I usually record this but as you can see it does look really good as a in, in, in like emulating in like RPCS3 it's got good FPS um, and it does reach 60 a couple of times uh, not all the time but you know because of the fact that this is still on PC it's pretty goddamn good now what I'm gonna explain right now is the fact that you honestly do need to actually play this game more on more and more on your PC in order for it to actually run kind of decently. Now, the reason why I say that is, like I said before, I was trying to allude to before, the game kind of compiles like different shaders and textures and kind of loads it into its own cache on your um, computer. So in order for you to actually have the best experience, you have to play this multiple times so all those shaders and those textures can compile on your computer so that you can have a good experience and obviously of course you can see that with warhawks fury the freaking uh the music isn't playing for you know when we actually go to boss fight i mean not boss fights but normal like fights in the game it's also really cool just just like kind of doing this on pc also i just lost like a lot of frames there but yeah i mean it is that is a consequence of using the simulator unfortunately there might actually be ways to actually download different like um you know shaders and caches on from other people's computers people that have actually played this game from front to back have probably have a lot more shaders compiled i've played this game twice on this emulator i've actually played it like back to back uh twice um both um off stream and on actually my stream i actually did a whole entire stream of this game um for on my youtube channel that you guys can actually check out and i just got it finished and it actually worked pretty well. I, I, you know, I didn't ever think I could actually stream Sonic Unleashed on like PC, but uh, this is this is the reality of life, I guess. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh oh. Uh. Hmm. 
<laughs> but yes, guys, it's basically the ghetto way of how to get Sonic Unleashed working on your PC. I'm just kidding. But this is the best way to actually get Sonic Unleashed working on your PC. Like I said before, I do not really like Xenia because Xenia is not really that good of an emulator at all. I don't think it's supported, and the people that are around the emulator are not that supportive. But the RPCS3 emulator is actually really awesome, and I really like that emulator a lot. So this is definitely my preferred way of actually playing Sonic Unleashed now. Now, unfortunately, the big downside of this is that you're going to have to have a good, decent P CPU to actually run this. But I will have to say that you can still downscale some settings if you have a CPU that might be worse than mine. And, you know, it'll still probably work fine. You can definitely hit 60 FPS and recording and all the other stuff. But, you know, emulation on RPCS3 is still a process, and for some reason, Sonic Unleashed is such a spaghetti code game that they, uh, it's still kind of the hardest, one of the hardest games to actually run. So you can still use this emulator to actually play other games, but for this tutorial right now, I think this is still the best way to play Sonic Unleashed in, on PC in 2024. Now, if you want to know other, like, you know, things about how to, like, run it and, like, you know, other things that you want to do, like how to update and all that stuff, you're going to have to find out for that stuff for yourself. But with that being said, guys, that's basically going to be this tutorial. I hope this tutorial was helpful, even though I was kind of, like, scrambling along. I haven't really done the tutorial in years, but also, I really like doing tutorials, and I really like, you know, just showing you guys the best ways to play Sonic games and you know just whatever else but anyways guys if you guys like this video like this video and if you guys like you saw and want to see more why not subscribe to the channel i have a twitter which is cambycam77 as well as a discord link in the description down below all my other social medias will be down there as well but with that being said guys thank y'all for watching have a good night everyone for watching this asta